Okay, what are IA firms looking for in new adjusters? Let's talk about it starting now. This is Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters. Joining NACA will provide you with the resources you need to build a lasting career as a claims professional at adjustertv.com slash NACA. Hey, what is up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. I want to talk about how IA firms view new adjusters and what makes an IA firm more comfortable in putting you who are maybe new to our industry, putting you to work sooner rather than later. So let's get after it. What I firms are looking for is somebody who can, at the minimum, fulfill the requirements that the, their carrier partner that they've contracted with, like just to use, use an example here, we'll say American Family Insurance uses pay starter claim service, right? And they have a contract, right? An agreement that has some rules about how, how what the adjusters do, or what their what their qualifications are. One of those with those guys just happens to be that you have to have, it, this was at least a couple of years ago anyway, you have to have two years of experience. They won't let you, they, won't, they don't want to do new adjusters. It's probably not a good example, but this is just as, as an example and that you've got the X licenses and that you have maybe a level two user, uh, Xactimate user certification. And you've got, um, you know, you've taken AMFAM's general certification, which goes over all the AMFAM stuff, the way they want their claims done, all the little rules and everything. And they have a test with it that you got to pass the test and so on and so forth, right? So AMFAM is telling Paysetter, hey, we're not going to accept an adjuster who doesn't fit those qualifications, right? Other other carriers will have different qualifications. They may say, well, it's okay if they're new, as long as they have um, hands-on in-person training, or as long as they have a certificate from this school or that school, or they have something, right? They have some kind of training and at least five licenses, or they, you know, we have a lot of policies in force in, you know, New Mexico, we really want them to have a New Mexico license, whatever, right? So um, basically, the the minimum that the IA firm is looking for from you as a new adjuster is going to be what the minimum is that the carrier is asking them to provide to them, right? Um, and it's different for every company. And you know, with Paysetter, for as just as a totally just random example, they have multiple insurance companies that they handle claims for. They send out adjusters on, and each one of those carriers will have a different qualification. So what you as a new person, you want to be as um, qualified as possible to work for as many of those companies as you can, especially in the very beginning. Obviously, if a company says, well, we don't, we're not going to put anybody out there that doesn't have at least two years of, of field adjusting experience, as a new person, you're probably not going to get work with American Family, right? You're going to have to go work for somebody else. State Farm doesn't have that requirement. Allstate doesn't have that requirement um, necessarily. Um, and then the IA firms may say, all right, well, listen, you know, we want, because competition is so ferocious in the independent adjusting world between the IA firms, that us, we as an IA firm, we're going to have our qualifications exceed the minimums that our carrier partners want. And so we're going to say, hey, we're not going to take anybody with less than five years of experience or less than 10 years of experience or nobody with less than, you know, two years of experience, which is the typical one. Because usually what that really means is you went on a storm this summer and then you just went for out for six weeks and that was it, which counts as your first year. And then next spring, they because they had put you to work already, they know that you can do it. Um, hopefully, then they, they put you on a couple, two or three other storms, right? You're not, it's not like 24 months consecutive work or whatever. It's like that you've been hand, handling claims in the, in the industry for this period of time. What can you do as a new person to, to be as qualified as possible to uh, look the best and to make the, the IA firm and their carrier client feel more comfortable, which is what this really boils down to. You kind of have to think about it in these terms to feel more comfortable about saying, all right, well, Matt has uh, A through G qualifications and certifications and licenses or whatever. And because he has that, he's got some skin in the game. We know that he at least has some foundational stuff. He's willing to put himself to expend resources and time to, uh, to get those trainings and those certifications and those licenses. Um, we think we can develop him and, you know, we know he's new, so he's still going to have stumbling, you know, blocks and whatever and challenges in his first first couple of storms. 
but we feel more comfortable about sending him out versus another person, the next person over, who only went to one in-person training and they have one license and that's it, right? That person is probably gonna still do better and, and be more, be, the IA firms and the carriers will be more comfortable about sending that person uh, over somebody who has zero, who just like heard about this a week before the, the hurricane and it just calls in like, hey, I can, I, I got a ladder, I can do it, you know? Right, so there's, there's levels here. So what can you do as a, a new person to, to put yourself in that position where they're like, they feel really comfortable about doing things that you've expended a lot of res your own resources doing this, which is kind of part of it because, you know, while a lot of IA firms do have trainings, um, they're generally speaking, um, carrier certification trainings, which are gonna be like, they're gonna teach you the State Farm way, right? If you, if you show up with, to those trainings without any other training at all, I, I think that you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing them a disservice and they're gonna notice it, right? If you show up and you, you've already got like an Xactimate level two certification, you've already got like the fast track to deployment certification through Adjuster TV, if you went to MoCat, you went to Veteran Adjusting School, whatever, um, then that stuff is gonna be easy for you and you're gonna be you know, able, able to help the person sitting next to you, you're gonna be able to answer questions, you know, they may have an exam, you're gonna do better on the exam, um, you're gonna be a lot more interactive in those trainings and they're gonna notice that, right? It's important because they're gonna say, well, this person, I've, th those trainings at the I firms, you should really consider those to be recruiting events, more or less. If you show up completely untrained with zero, because you're like, I don't think I should have to pay any money, or I, don't, if, I should only pay $99 to get a six-figure job, right? Just go into this IA firm training thing. Then we don't want you. It's just, if, if, you, if you come in as a mercenary and you think you can just do everything for free, uh, it's not, I shouldn't say we don't want you. We want you to understand that, you, that you're, you're gonna be a much better fit for the industry if you, uh, take this stuff into your own hands, right? And, and and do a lot of this work beforehand on your own. So what do you do, right? What does your resume look like as a new person? The very first thing I will tell you to do is to get your designated, your home state or your designated home state license, and then <clears throat> pick up as many as you can, all of them if you can, but as many of as, as you can afford of the licenses, we'll say from Texas to uh, through the, the Gulf states and maybe up to you know the Atlantic side to New York, get every license in there that you can, right? And then uh, pick up other ones later as as you can as needed. Um, the the probably the number one thing I could say that you that's going to make you the give you the most opportunities in this work is going to be those licenses, right? And if you have a lot of licenses on your resume up at the top, right, that's going to look the best for a hiring manager, or a recruiter, or a team manager who maybe the person is just he's got a team, he needs a person, so he's going to go out and look for a person, and you, you pop up, right? The next thing you need to have is you need to have an Xactimate Level Two certification, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. Um, you can, I, I think you can absolutely be proficient with level one, 100%. If that's all you can do, like just right out of the gate and like the storm's blowing up, it's gonna hit and make landfall today, right? And you gotta get some Xactimate training, seek out Xactimate level one and just go through that program and take the test, right? To get the certification and that will, when you when you crack open Xactimate to handle new claims with that train with but you just with level one you're gonna be light years ahead of where you would would be if you had just you're walking into a cold fresh off the street onto a storm, right? Level two is a lot more advanced than level one, and level two is the one that gets, get take, gets taken a lot more seriously by most of the firms. Some carriers require adjusters to have a level two Xactimate user certification, so that's why I would say. One, if, you, if that's all you can do, and it's, it's just like you just need to learn the software just fast, do one. If you want something that looks good on a resume, do level two, right? So it's, it's software proficiency. Um, from there, um, I'm gonna tell you to get some damage ID training, right? Um, you may or may not need to go get certifi certified for this, but you could, if you go to hageeducation.com, um, again, coupon code adjuster TV for, for those guys, um, they have a lot of really, high quality, low cost damage ID trainings that don't have a certification attached to them. Start with the compos roof comp composition roofing one for sure, um, because it's gonna be the, the vast majority of things that you look at are gonna be composition roofs, especially as a cat property adjuster. And it's gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna help you to distinguish between what is wear and tear and age 
uh, on a roof versus sudden, direct, accidental physical loss caused by a covered peril. Hail, wind, tree, you know, flying debris, whatever it is, right? So you need to be able to distinguish between those two things so that you can write an accurate estimate. Using your skills that you picked up as a level two certified adjuster, right? If you can get those three things, um, licensing, Xactimate level two, and then just dive into hagueducation.com and really start uh, taking those damage ID things, um, that's gonna be a great start for you. Uh, as far as how, how to word that on your resume, you know, you can just say, um, these are the list of bullet points, list them out that maybe you've taken six of them, right? With the, the flat panels, the, the composition, the wood, the whatever it is, right? List those out, taking these train, you know, these trainings. And then from there, you, you really need to have some kind of uh, training that will give you an overview of the process, the claim, overall claims process, how to, how to do the things, how to use the tools that you've, you've learned, you've picked up, right? So exactly, how do you use that in the context of a claim? Um, obviously, Adjuster TV Plus has a lot of resources for this. Um, I will talk about our certification for this, which we've developed um, in conjunction with the IA firms, and that is the Fast Track Deployment Program, which puts all this stuff together for you. Um, it teaches you scheduling piece, uh, how to talk to the homeowners, the insureds, the contractors, what to say, what not to say, right? Scripts, basically, how to document your files with your photos and your, your, your diaries, um, how to scope houses, um, how to take photos, right? There's a there's a art to it, really. Um, how to write your estimates and how to how to build out your whole file, how to close the file, um, and the whole the whole entire process. And then there's there's two tests that go with it um, to test that you that stuff all went into your brain, right? That is um, increasingly becoming an industry standard um, that we're pretty proud of, and it's something that we're all constantly working to um, improve um, to make it as relevant and as as useful as possible without teaching you a bunch of stuff that, that you may or may not use. It's not totally relevant to you know everything that you're going to do as a claims adjuster, but to give you really the, the, the really really solid meat and potatoes um, foundations of the claims process. And this is what the, the IA firms told us that they wanted adjusters to have to to know show up with these skills or this knowledge and understanding, uh, having seen the process beforehand, um, and you'll be good to go, right? And Matt tests you and Matt grades your you know you're going to get claim scenarios and Matt will grade them and um, you know, to see that the, you, you can actually do it. Because I did it, I was an adjuster for 20 years, right? So I know what the process is. I know what a good file is supposed to look like. I'm gonna teach you how to make the great file and how to manage your time and everything, and then hand you off to my people. So that's the fourth thing that I would say is to get a certification like the Fast Track to Deployment, which I think is unique. Um, I don't know that anybody is really doing anything quite like it. Um, if you can't swing that, um, it is self-paced. And enrollment, I think it, it opens and closes. Um, and there are limitations to it because we are hand grading a lot of the stuff. Um, so it's not just open all the time for whoever wants to jump in. Um, we do have to limit uh, enrollment and when we open enrollment and stuff like that so that we can make sure that we give everybody an, enough attention and to be able to, to reasonably grade their stuff in, in a reasonable amount of time. So just to kind of wrap this whole thing up, you want to have licenses. This is all top loaded stuff, right? Your name, your contact information, and then put the home, your home state, right? I, I look at a lot of resumes and I'll see, I have to dig around and hunt and find out where this person actually lives. It's important because the, the, the hiring management may say, look for somebody in New Mexico. And if it's not clear that you're, you live in New Mexico, they may throw your thing aside and, and go to the next one, right? You know, Eric Smith, New Mexico adjuster, contact information. Uh, these are my licenses. You don't have to put the license numbers or whatever. You can put your, your national producer number right um, on there, your NPN, um, and they can look them up, right? But you could list them out just by FL comma TX comma NM comma MN comma whatever, right? And then you would say Xactimate Level 2 certified, which they can look up by the way. So don't just put that on there. They can, they'll, they'll look it up in a, in a directory. And then you can say, um, Hague Education um, studied these courses, this course material for this for the damage ID inside of da da da, da for this. Um, Fast Adjuster TV's Fast Track to Deployment certified adjuster um, graduated this this period of time, whatever it is, you know, whatever September 2023, um, so on and so forth. And then below that, and that's the top half, that's above the fold on your resume. The bottom half will be like you know 
to restoration construction sales for two years, uh, bartender for three years, you know, so on and so forth. Stuff that is, a lot of customer service stuff looks good on there. Any, anything construction, anything law enforcement, military, all that stuff looks good. Um, so that would be if you're going to uh, if you're looking if you're looking for information about what IFRM is looking for in a, in a new adjuster um, and what to put on your resume, that's it. If you want to watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.